sports in the world, the most elegant is figure skating. You've enjoyed the beauty and grace of a Janet Lynn. And you've applauded the athletic moves of a JoJo Starbuck. Today, for the first time, you will see the greatest figure skaters in the world in actual team competition. All of the precise and difficult moves you've witnessed will be measured by distance and speed. From the Omni International in Atlanta, Georgia, CBS Sports presents the first annual World Skate Challenge. A battle of ice stars. Let's meet the blue team, stars of Canada's The Ice Show. The dynamic Gordon McKellen, three times U.S. champion, world and Olympic competitor. Janet and Mark Homanou. Innovative pair moves are their specialties. Wendy Burge from Los Angeles, she'll cross over and skate for the Canadian show she represents. Andy Jones and Don Frazier, twice Canadian pair champions. You'll marvel at their strength. Kath Malmberg, married to Gordon McKellen. Kath is a veteran of international competition. And the captain of the blue team, one of the most innovative and dynamic skaters in the world. Twice an Olympian out of Canada, it is Tyler Cranston. Now, meet the yellow team, the stars from America's Ice Shows, former Olympian Jojo Starbuck. <laughs> Melissa Militano and Johnny Johns, former U.S. pair champions. A star of the Ice Capades, meet Don Knight. Karen Magnuson, Canada's great world champion and Olympic medalist. Richard Yule, another star from the Ice Capades. And America's most beloved skater, Janet Lynn. She's a five-time U.S. champion, world and Olympic veteran, outstanding star of the ice volleys. The captain of the yellow team is Ken Shelley, the only skater to win both the national singles and pairs titles. And the yellow team is ready. A CBS Sports Special, the World Skate Challenge, is sponsored by Tuborg Gold, the golden beer of Danish Kings, Tuborg Breweries Limited, Baltimore, Maryland. Guys from the two teams starting to warm up behind us. Now, I'm Brent Musburger along with Gary Visconti, who is a former world and national champion and now teaches young skaters out in Southern California. And Gary, this competition is going to be completely different. An audience has never seen this before. Very much so, Brent. This is the first time in the history of professional skating we have a championship with measured events against time, against distance. And we have got some great competitors. Remember Janet Lynn and Karen Magnuson in the early 70s? How many times they went at it, Karen? We have many old rivalries. We have such great outstanding skaters also as Tyler Cranston from Canada. And they are all professionals, and believe me, they are all tremendous competitors. Gary, let's get right to the action. I'm ready. Who can do the most number of butterflies? And earlier, Gary, Wendy Burge gave us this demonstration. You'll notice this is a very difficult move, Brent, consisting of a one-foot takeoff, a one-foot landing. Very similar to a handless cartwheel. She has gorgeous control. Hey, Gary, I couldn't do that with tennis shoes. These people have got <laughs> ice skates. Now, Richard Yule for the yellow team will be our first competitor. Now, 10 points will go to the winning team and five points to the losing team. Total prize money in this competition, $80,000 and a $20,000 difference between first and second place. The teammates of Richard counting out his number of butterflies. At 13, Richard's still going. He's really pushing himself, Brent, on this one. He has the whistle. And there's Carol Heiss, our chief referee, stopping him. <laughs> I think he's happy to be stopped. Very much so, Brent. You'll see here in the slow motion on his last butterfly there, the timing going into it really broke it. But he was driving, wasn't he? Very much so. He's exhausted. The yellow team wants the 10 points, and here's Gordy McKellen to see if he can take it away. 16 is the final count for Richard Ewell. That's what Gordy's got to be. 
Look at this man push himself. You see, in a butterfly, it's all the snap, the top part of the body dropping down, lifting that leg right over the head. And you know, Brent, that blood is really rushing to his head on each one of these. They're counting out, so he knows Close exactly. it in. He's at 12. Two to go to tie. There it is. One more to beat him. He's tired, too. <laughs> Look at that. Ah, oh, Bob Gordy collapses. But not before he picks up a victory and 10 points for the blue team. Gordon McKellen. You kind of wore him out, Jerry. Very much so. Here's the crowd at the Avenue enjoying this competition. We'll watch Gordon again. As he struggles down the stretch to pass 16 by Richard Yule and pick up the victory. I'm glad we never had to do 16 butterflies, Grant, when I skated. <laughs> All right, Gary, the blue team leads the yellow 10 points to 5 because of Gordon McKellar. You've already seen our chief referee, Carol Heiss, the Olympic gold medalist. The two judges flanking her, Dick Dwyer, for 25 years, a star of the ice volleys, and Ted Shuffle, an outstanding director and ice choreographer for Holiday on Ice. Our next competition, the pair of sit spin, brother and sister. Here at Mark and Janet Hamanouk, Gary. In this pair event, you'll see that balance and control is very important, and usually the position of the spin. In this particular competition we're seeing right now is the amount of revolutions that the pair does successfully. 22. So the Hamanooks wind up with a total of 22 sit spins. And coming out now for the yellow team will be Ken Shelley and JoJo Starbuck. They've skated together for 19 years, Gary. I'd have to make them a favorite in this event. Well, you're right, Brent, but 22 revolutions, it's going to be tough to beat. Eight, nine, ten. The lack of control, you have to watch for that. The center, the balance point is very important in this spin. You see here where they start rocking, and now they're losing their center, and it's all over. Eighteen. Blue team wins again, Gary. The Hamanooks with 22. Did you notice how much the competitors seem to be enjoying this? Generally, you watch figure skaters, Gary, and there's so much pressure that you don't get the smiles that you see here. Look at Ken Shelley. He's just driving to keep it going. I didn't know what was missing. Maybe I did, but I just wouldn't listen. Wasn't it me who said I'll never fall for anyone? And look what I've done. Don't you fall for what I did. Don't you fall. Millions of you have marveled at the talents of Ken Shelley and JoJo Starbuck. Freestyle is part of our competition, and the World Skate Challenge continues on CBS in just a moment. One of the favorite skaters of all time has to be Janet Lynn. And you know, up in the fastest spin, we're going to get a chance to see her, Gary. We'll watch her technique also in slow motion to see how it assists her in competing in this event. Gary, earlier, Janet gave us this demonstration of a spin, but she won't use this routine, will she, in the actual competition? No, but this gives us the opportunity to look at her technique. Her beautiful center, good line, good control. And the pressure is on Janet Lynn's yellow team as they are down by 10 points to the blue. Now, here's Wendy Burge, and Gary, she's going to have 15 seconds to do the most number of spins. Right, Brent, and the entry is very vital to how many turns you can get out of 15 seconds. You'll see here that she keeps her arms fully extended before bringing them in. The free leg could be a little tighter there, Brent. She's going off balance. The human eye can't possibly count those revolutions. But, of course, we've got slow motion, instant replay, so we'll bring it back, and we'll have Wendy's teammates count them out for us. You'll see here, Brent, that the arms should be completely extended with the free leg as high as possible. The balance point is just behind the toe pick of the skating foot. The back must be kept very straight. The head erect and the eyes looking straight out as to not spot. You'll see here the free leg should come in very tight. Now, you're going to get maximum amount of speed by pushing the arms up over the head or pulling them in tight. 
<laughs> Here's where she's going off a little bit, Brent, right there. 37. And that's the number that Janet Lynn will be shooting for. That was a good entry. It's beautiful, Brent. Look at that control. The whole idea is to get a good hook into the entry of that spin. She has a lovely center so far, wrapping it in very nice and tight. She also chose to push the hands over the head. What do you see during a spin such as that? The complete line of travel right over the skating foot, Brent. And Gary, do you think she was faster? Well, it sure appears that she is. Wilson gets more amount of revolutions than Wendy. And I think the crowd here in the Omni Center agrees with you. They've got their favorites, don't they? Very much so, Brent. Look at that sign. Janet, let's take a look in slow motion of your spin, have all your teammates count, and also the opposition, and see how you did. And the judges. <laughs> Here on the entry in slow motion, you can see she has a very good center, a nice end of that hook. You'll see her free leg is fully extended as high as possible. The arms are out quite far from the sides of the body. Janet, you must beat 37. 37. Janet, you've got it. That does it. That cuts the blue team's lead down to five points. It's 25 to 20. I would have gone faster if I was crooked. <laughs> Janet Lynn's journey to figure skating success began at the age of five in Rockford, Illinois. And according to those who know this sport best of all, they say that Janet possessed a musically developed style of choreography. And it was something that few have mastered, like Janet Lynn. Her career has culminated with beautiful performances such as this one with the Ice Fallers. So many times back in the early 70s, you watched these two lovely girls compete against each other, Janet Lynn and Karen Magnuson. I guess I really shouldn't refer to you as girls anymore. You are full-grown women, but... We're married ladies. <laughs> what did you... How long has it been, Karen, since you and Janet have seen each other? Four years since 1973, since I've seen pictures of her and heard about her marriage and her baby boy, and but that's about it. Until now, this is the first time we've been together since yeah. 1973. Janet, what moment do you remember in competition most against Karen? Is there anything that stands out in all those duels you two had? Not really. I think when we were competing, we were thinking about ourselves and not about each other. You know, every time we were so zeroed in on what we were doing that you didn't really notice any of the competitors anywhere. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you know, you. I don't think we really can, said, you know, I never said to myself, I'm competing against that particular girl, Janet Lynn. You know, it was, you were out there competing and trying to do the best possible job you could do every every year, but there was sort of a rivalry going on, you know, in papers and the media and everything else. But I think between the two of us, you know, we were good friends, I think, you know, off the ice, and on the ice we were competitors, really. Janet, a lot of people didn't recognize you with the new look and the hair style. Well, I guess that's a lady's privilege. <laughs> right. Whenever I see your smiling face, I have to smile myself because I love you. Yes, I do. And when you give me that pretty little pout, it turns me inside out. There's something about you, baby, I don't know. From the beauty and grace of a Janet Lynn, we'll move to the power and the athletic ability of a taller Cranston in just a moment.
Welcome back to the World Skate Challenge. Star of Canada's The Ice Show, ahead by those five. Gary, we've added some endurance to our competition. Richard Yule has already gone in the double axle competition. Right, this is a two and a half revolution jump, stepping from one foot to the other. You have to have a maximum amount of control on the takeoff and the landing. And here, his lack of control on the checkout does not enable him to jump successfully into the last double axle, thus completing one and a half revolutions. Richard finishes up with four, and the next competitor is Taller Cranston. Gary, he has to be the most dramatic male skater in the world. One, two, three, one to go to beat Richard Yule. He's done it. He's the winner. He's really keeping up his speed, Brent. And look at that control. Oh, there's his last one. Look at that trademark. Tyler Cranston always ends with a trademark. Being congratulated by Gordy and Calf and the other members of that blue team. Lead now 35-25 over the yellow. Brent, you can see why he's so successful. The complete control and the straight back, good speed, driving into each and every one of the double axle jumps, checking out completely, all except for that last one there. He loves the stage too, Gary. And he always has something very interesting to say about each of his performances. Again, I guess it's all the years of competitive uh, spirit, you know, coming coming out. And uh, when the pressure's on, you just do it. I, I don't think that uh, the art of skating really is in how many double axles you can do. Rather, how beautiful a, a one double axle is. But um, all the years of training uh, prove that, you know, when you have to do it, you can do eight or ten in a row. And uh, Tala, what about this team of yours, this blue team? They came in as yeah. underdogs. What about this? Well, we, we still are underdogs because there's some uh, competition tomorrow. But I'm very proud, in particular, Th things like Gordy McKellen's uh, butterflies, which I didn't even know he could do one, but he won. <laughs> it was all uh, very What exciting. about your coach's performance, though, team? Hey, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Let's hear one big cheer now for Tom. <laughs> and with that performance by Tyler Cranston, the blue team leads 35 to 25. Now let's get you up to date on everything that's happened. This was action from the men's fastest spin. Don Knight, he won it 48 revolutions for Knight. Gordy McKellen turned in 43, and this got the yellow team right back in the thick of things as they trailed the blue by five points after this victory by Knight, 40 to 35. And now, Gary, we've got one of the slowest events, the longest spiral. Kath Malmberg is matched against Karen Magnuson. Here's Kath. Why are they going so slow, Gary? Well, this speed is <laughs> taken care of at the beginning of the trick. And you stand on one foot, as Kath is doing, with one leg firmly extended, nice and straight behind her. There's not one push allowed in this entire move. We must tell you that she's getting a little technical assistance right here. <laughs> Look at that Come control. On, Look at that. Come on, Kathy. You Come got on. Mark Spitzes of the world beat. Let's go. So that's the distance for Kath Malmberg. And now it is Karen Magnuson's turn, Gary. She's very famous for this particular move, Brent. It should be a very strong challenge by Karen. She's already passed one complete lap of the ring. Now let's see what she did. You'll see this position extended and held really under control. Come on, Karen. She's got it. She's around that cone. Picks up 10 points for the yellow team. Let's celebrate that victory. <laughs> that away, Karen. Tied at 45. Next, Gary, we have the death spiral. Don Frazier and Candy Jones. The death spiral consists of the girl riding on the back outer edge while the man is doing a pivot. His toe is in the ice. It's the maximum amount of turns that she will do in this layback position. To Gary, those six and a half revolutions gave Don Frazier and Candy Jones a victory over Melissa Militano and Johnny Johns. And here's Ken Shelley. It's the splitter-split competition. Watch for the skates above the hip line. It's dramatic and it's quick. 
Beautiful move by Kenny. Brent, the key to this particular move is speed and height. Let's look at it. What you should watch for is the picking of the toe used as a pole vault to push himself straight up into the air. Extreme height and reaching far forward with the hands. How would you rate that split, Gary? Great. Hard to beat. Pressure's on to Captain Toller Cranston of the blue. Oh, oh. a great leap by Toller Cranston. Uh, <laughs> so dramatic. Does he enjoy it? <laughs> you don't think he doesn't like the limelight? And so the blue team stays ahead because of that victory by Toller. What's Gordy McKellen doing over here? Oh, he's trying to get the crowd solidly behind the blue. Here comes Johnny Johns. He objects a little bit. Easy now. Let's have none of that. So Toller Cranston and the blue team are up by 10. <laughs> nice jump, Toller. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's not a, it's not a, a difficult jump. It's, I think it's the kind of jump that... Uh, that children or young skaters can do right away or not at all. I think it really is uh, how you're built, and I've always been very flexible. Looks tough enough to me. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. And the World Skate Challenge will continue in a moment. Atlanta, Georgia, and here's what happened in the single throw axle. It was Don Frazier and Candy Jones. Watch Frazier's tremendous strength. 21 feet, one and a half inches, this winning toss. As they down Ken Shelley and JoJo Starback, but Gary just about carried her 30 feet. That's all right. The measuring on this particular move is from her takeoff to her landing point on one foot. Now we're going to watch the second attempt in the double throw axle competition. Janet and Mark Hominuk, they were out 13 feet, Gary. This double axle consists of two and a half revolutions right there. Oh, she dropped her freely down. They made this qualifier, Gary. Yes, I think so. It's her second attempt on this. 13 feet again, their first effort. Carol Heiss conferring there with the judges. Let's see why this particular throw double axle was not successful. Remember now, Brent, this is a two and a half revolution jump. Good takeoff. Good position so far. She's starting to lean forward. Right there, the arms go. No check out. She drops the free leg on two feet. And Gary, Carol Heiss says that she is going to be disqualified. So their first double throw axle of 13 feet will stand up. And Melissa Militano and Johnny Johns will shoot for that. They have great power and great speed. They have to play a little safe today. Oh, that was magnificent, Gary. And the crowd here in Atlanta loves it. Sure, you can do that with lots of practice, can't you? Melissa and Johnny. What a job they did to get the yellow team right back in the thick of things. Here it is, Gary. Now, let's enjoy this slow motion on their technique. Beautiful lift. Much straighter. Very good. Watch the control on that touchdown. And Gary, the winning distance, 16 feet, 6 inches. Blue team's lead over the yellow is cut to 10. Melissa, it can't be that easy. You look so graceful when you come through that. Well, um, this time the pressure was really on both Johnny and I, and we wanted to land it on one foot, so I really played it safe, and it turned out all right. Johnny, what's the key to that particular well, stunt? Well, timing, mostly timing. I have a tendency to rush it, and this one, I, I didn't throw it as hard as I could have. I think we could have gotten a few more feet. I just wanted to make sure we had a consistent one. The yellow team needed it, too, Melissa. Yes, sure did. <laughs> I'm glad we did it. Yeah. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. House lights go dim, and so that means the standard skating competition, Gary. Right, Brent. This is the regular free skating event. Each team will give one man, one lady, and one pair. Their accumulative points will then designate the leader of that event. We'll see them now. Here's Ken Shelley, the captain of the yellow team. spin from earlier in the broadcast that was part of our individual competition now this will be scored on a team basis a total of 90 points 45 for athletic ability and 45 for artistic achievement and you get the impression that the performers are relaxed right here gary well, this is what they're used to doing performing for people they feel right at home here brent you can see his expression he's very pleased with himself
athletic ability also. Very versatile. Double sow cow into a double loop jump. Now he's going to be going into a flying sit spin right here, Brent. Very good. Very good. Must be nice, Gary, not to have those serious-looking judges over there with their pins poised while you're doing it. Very much so. He's an entertainer at heart. You can see it. I remember that move, Gary. That's the split of split you talked to me about. Right, Grant. Great music he's chosen also. The Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2 for a very strong finish on Kenny's part. I'm always struck, Gary, by the freshness on the part of these performers when they come out for a free skating routine. You have to keep in mind that a performer like Ken Shelley goes out and does this, well, just about every night during the tour, he's on the ice. The ice capades and the ice follies have been so successful across the United States, as well as Canada. And the World Skate Challenge continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. For the sport, some performers always rise above the crowd. Known as stars, Taller Cranston is a star. Talk to him about this competition. And the competition that we have here is something that I think is the first time in history that um, competing conceivably is going to become a pleasure. All of the skaters here are uh, ex-competitors of mine, either um, if they're male, female, or pairs. We've known each other for years. Um, on both teams, the yellow and the blue, there are members um, from both countries, the United States and Canada. And um, this is a trial to see how it works. But one thing that has already uh, proven itself to be wonderful is that um, we had a wonderful reunion today. And skaters that had not seen each other for years were able to get together and pick up from where they left off. And uh, I think that on the part of the, uh, the blue team, as I am the captain, I think that um, it should prove to be a lot of fun. And entering this freestyle competition, Taller's blue team, Gary, finds itself ahead by 10 points. And at stake in the freestyle competition, among the men, women, and pairs, a total of 90 points. Gary, the flair for the dramatic ending. Grant Towler really does turn on the audience with his flair and ingenuity. They're really eating it up. And now let's take a look at what this artist can do with moves like the Russian split jump. Into a butterfly and then followed through by that Cranston unique style into a broken leg sits in. You have to remember that we are here for fun and there is a love of skating that transcends everything. And, uh, and skating is enjoyment and beauty. And when you remember that, it's never difficult. May I congratulate you on the courage to try things that are brand new in skating. I think it's just marvelous what you have brought to this sport. Thank you. will total up the points for Cranston and Shelley. Then they will add them on to the women's singles and the pairs because, of course, this is team competition. Here's Wendy Burge of the blue team. So much of the enjoyment in the free skating competition revolves around a lot of things, including the costume, the music, and whether or not the performer is enjoying what he or she is doing. And Wendy seems to love it.
watched athletes compete in Madison Square Garden, the Chicago Stadium, and the Los Angeles Forum. And nothing brings down a house like a figure skater who gets into her work. Her enjoyment really shows in her face, Brent. Let's watch in slow motion her great technique. Beautiful arch in that layback spin. Lovely control. Just excellent. Wendy Burge of the blue team, now representing the yellow team, will be JoJo Starbuck. Gary, I'm fascinated by the lines that athletes create, whether they're football, basketball, or boxers. Pay particular attention to the lines that JoJo Starbuck makes on your television screen, those long and beautiful legs and arms. knows how to do it to a crowd, doesn't she? Red, her poise and maturity has grown so much since her last Olympic performance with her partner, Ken Shelley. It's amazing. change of pace in a routine as she's famous for these illusion moves right into a flying camel spin and another illusion right there brent Starbucks. JoJo is married to quarterback Terry Bradshaw, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Wouldn't it be nice to have JoJo waiting for you after a tough day at that office facing those brutes in the defensive line, Gary? If I was Terry, I don't think I'd ever go on the road. <laughs> There's that illusion again, Brent. Very good. The crowd liked you. Oh, they made it easy for me. How did it feel being out there without a partner, without Ken Shelley with you? Well, I'm used to that, but I'm not used to competing as an individual. And uh, I didn't, I tried not to look at it as a competition tonight, because I always do better when I do it for the audience rather than the judges. You were beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Skate Challenge continues on CBS in just a moment. Romney in Atlanta, Georgia in the World Skate Competition. Your team freestylers. Here's the pairs. The Militano and Johnny Johns. Make the difficult look easy. To 
took many years of concentrated practice, Brent, to bring them to the quality of a world championship pair. Oh, they love them here in Atlanta. Let's take a look at some of that routine again, and Gary, you can point out what makes them so outstanding. Their great athletic ability and speed and strength, such as Johnny's strength in this star lift, using just one arm right there on the last rotation. Yeah, you touched upon the most underrated aspect of pair skating, strength. Pay particular attention, Don Frazier and Candy Jones, to the raw power that he demonstrates in this routine. pays off for him right here with that arm strength. Well, Brent, it shows when he has Candy in a position like this. It's a very dangerous spin if you really look at it. You know, they're very fresh, young, energetic pair. And it certainly shows in their performance. Carol, I'm so glad that you three had to judge that and not me. What were the results? All right, now for artistic impression, the yellow team, which you understand was Ken Shelley, Jojo Starbuck, and Militano and Johns, they got 20 points. The blue team, which consisted of Paula Paston, Wendy Burge, Andy Jones, and Don Fraser, got 25 points. For athletic ability, the yellow team got 20 points. For Paula Paston's team, the blue team, they got 25 points. So you can see the winner was the blue team. They pick up 10 more points overall, is that right? Yes, now in this freestyle competition, it was 40 to 50 points, and overall now, it's 110 to 130. So the pressure is on the yellow team. Oh, it is, absolutely. And we'll be back with the team events as the World Skate Challenge continues in a moment. Wonder and for 30 points for the winners and 10 for the losers. Gary, can you explain? Add on a bit. The add-on is a series of jumps. Started by the first skater, they add one jump. The second skater will add a jump to that first jump. Now, if that skater does not successfully complete the last jump or changes the order, the other member wins. Yellow team, who will your two competitors be? Alexander and Kathy. And the blue team, who will you respond with? Tyler and Kathy. All right, good luck to you. What Pick up with Melissa Militano. This is her second time out. She opens with a double sow cow, stepping into an axle, stepping right into a double toe loop, stepping down right into an illusion, into that one foot double sow cow. Right, oh, oh, right into a... That was added on by Toller Cranston, and that is a difficult move, and she was unable to finish it correctly, so she has been eliminated. Now here's Kath Malmberg. The double salco again, stepping straight into the axle, into the double toe loop. Illusion. Her husband calling out the tricks, finishing her illusion, right into the one foot double salco. And she missed it too. 
Right. So Beth joins Melissa on the sideline. And it's down to the two male competitors. Here's Ken Shelley. Nice double south cow. Good speed and flow into the axle. Directly into the double toe. Into the illusion, which is usually hard for a man to do. The one foot double south cow. Came out of it. Right, right into a falling reef jump. Now it's up to Tyler Cranston to complete that add-on that Ken Shelley has put on it. This is just about every move that you see in a skating routine. There's his double sow, right into his axle, into his double toe loop, into his illusion, right there. One foot double sow cow, which was the killer that he put on earlier, into the falling leap, into a double loop jump. So the double loop jump has been added on by Tyler Cranston, and it goes back to Ken Shelley. He can maintain enough speed throughout this combination. There's a double saw call into an axle, again into that double toe, into that tricky illusion, into his one foot double saw call, into his falling leap. And the double loop, and now a butterfly. Oh, a butterfly, and a neat ending by Ken Shelley, and the yellow team is enthusiastic. They trail right now, but they think they've got something going. Let's we'll watch and see what Tyler has to add up the end of that butterfly. Double sack out again. Into the axle. Into the double toe loop. Into the illusion. One foot double sow cow. Into the falling leap. Into the double loop. Into the butterfly right there. And a half loop into a back sits then. That is difficult, especially there, Brent. Gary, it's a good thing that those teammates are yelling out the different add-ons. You'd have to forget them. I would have forgotten them long ago, Brent. <laughs> here's Kenny. Now here's his first trick, that double sow cow. I hope he keeps his ears open to his teammates. Right into the double toe up there. Don't lose track of it, Janet. Find out where Kenny is. This is his fourth move, the illusion. He has five more to go, and then his six will be his own add-on. There's the one-foot double sow cow. Into the falling leap. Round into the double loop jump. Into that butterfly. Into that half loop. Back sit. Good. And now his own move right here. Oh, it looks like he went to repeat a move. And you can't do that, uh, Gary. Right, he was right. going to do either a butterfly or an illusion. So Tyler Cranston and the blue team score a victory here in the add-on. Now we come to one of those, those yeah, moments right. for the yellow team when uh, you have fallen back now yep. by enough points to issue a challenge. Yeah. You got one ready? Yes, we have a challenge. Uh, we have to talk about it. <laughs> we have to talk about it first, no? Johnny Johns and Melissa Mattel are going to give a challenge. And we'll be uh, telling the judge in a few minutes. But we have to talk about it. Okay, okay good luck. Good luck. No one can tell me that I'm doing wrong today. Whenever I see your smile, it makes my way. The Yellow Team's last chance. Back with it on the World Skate Challenge in just a moment. The first challenge issued by the yellow team failed, but look at this trick. Johnny Johns extending Melissa Militano high into the air with a triple split twist, and they just failed to make it. By putting her foot down and landing on two feet, she failed to complete that move, thus nullifying the points. Now there's only one chance left. A ladies challenge. Kenny, you missed that challenge, but now yes. you have an opportunity for a second one. Will you take it? Yes. Uh, Karen Magnuson is going to do a spin combination, hoping that we can uh, get back there. Uh, does the blue team have any questions this time so we can avoid any controversy? What is a spin com combination? Uh, Karen will uh, explain it to the judges and it will be written down. All right, I will be doing a camel spin, sit spin, layback into a back spin that I, I made up, and into a jump sit spin. Captain of the blue team, uh, who will respond to that for you? I will respond, and we're very depressed about that combination. We have to go and talk it over. I think maybe I better do it. I better change costume. <laughs> All right, the team championship is on the line. The yellow team is behind. They must win this challenge. Janet Lynn huddling with Karen Magnuson.
Two former world-class competitors on the same side right now. And Gary, what a complex spin movement that is, that jump-sit spin. This is a very unique combination, Brent. This uh, has incorporated her own spin in the middle of it. Here's a lovely camel spin. Changing down into a sit spin. Up into a nicely centered layback with an arm movement. Into this very difficult back attitude spin and outside edge. Jumping right into a forward sit spin. And Kath Malmberg has been selected by Toller Cranston's blue team to respond to that challenge by Karen Magnuson and the yellow squad. Kath has to equal this spin, Brent. It's very unique and inventive on Karen's part. Let's see if she can match it. A camel into that sit spin, up into that layback with the rolling arm movement, stepping into a difficult back outside attitude, jump into the sit, she did it! And that's worth $20,000 to her team. She's a heroine. Have you ever done that routine before? No, I haven't. <laughs> what was the toughest right, part? Um, I think the part that Karen had made up was tough for me because I've never done a spin like that. Before. Your husband was threatening you. That's why you did. <laughs> hey, that's right. We just bought a new house, and I wasn't going to make the payments if she didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> What a delight it was to cover this first annual World Skate Challenge here in Atlanta. And on behalf of all of us at CBS Sports, Gary Viscati, I'm Brent Musburger, and thank you so much for inviting us in this afternoon. The CBS Sports Special, the World Skate Challenge, has been sponsored by Vic Sinex Long Action.